So I'm doing a video unboxing of my brand new TP-Link wide router. It's a TL-R600 VPN. So uh, quick background is um, something I've learned over the years is you can't get something that is a jack of all trades and expect it to be really good at any particular thing. And okay, so what am I saying? I'm talking about having a wired and wireless router combined in one, which most of them are, most people just get, especially if you just get it with your ISP, it's gonna be a wireless wired, and they're never good at either of them. That's my experience, that's what I found, especially for Wi-Fi. To get decent Wi-Fi, you've got to have a dedicated Wi-Fi dish, in my opinion, and uh, I got myself um, a Unify, and um, I just don't know myself since, you know, all these years I've been using, uh, the wireless features on on the router you know always getting dropouts never getting good connection especially if you've got multiple devices connected so i've got the unified dish and i've got to say i recommend that 100 percent basically 100 percent reliable 100 percent uptime uh, all devices you know max speed it's brilliant um anyway to go i turned off the wireless feature so i've got a billion seven thousand eight hundred which was at the time quite like a 200 pound router it was a couple of years ago um, never really been that happy with it, um, you know, and it's a wired slash, slash um, wireless router. So turn off the wireless functions. Still, it's not that great wide because they're, they're not, you know, they're built to do two things. You're paying for the circuitry for two things packed into one box. So, right, I've separated out my wireless and I'm going to, well, the I think it was, I'm going to get myself um, a dedicated wide router. I've got BT Infinity uh, 2. Uh, which is uh, fiber and that uses a dedicated modem so I only only need to connect so that initiates the um, connection so the router just has to, in, to pick up the uh, the one from the uh, modem so this is a basic um, wired router in other words it's no nonsense you know and you're not paying for you know th th they're research and development and the money you're paying hasn't gone into doing loads of things that you know that probably most people are never going to use um and end up not doing any of them particularly well which is, is what i find most routers you know i know you get custom firmware for routers and all that but at the end of the day i just want something simple that's going to work that's reliable and this is more like semi-commercial so it should be pretty resilient um the reason review is pretty good basically some people say they have to um reboot them every so often which <laughs> most people would do with any router wouldn't you um but yeah so it's got four gigabyte ports uh for the lan and a gigabyte uh port for the wan but of course it doesn't really matter having a huge connection for you for where you're connected to the internet because um that you, what signal you're going to get through that is actually down to your NAT throughput. The NAT throughput on this is 120 20 megabytes, so which is fine. It's a bit better than the billion, um, and my my internet is 76 megabytes down, so it's well within that spec. Um, so just give you the headline features that they talk about for this router. So the four gigabit uh, Ethernet ports uh, already mentioned. Of course, I'm going to connect them to switches. I mean, I got a lot need a lot more connections than that. So you just need use separate um, switches, uh, which don't have to be manager and they're just basic switches and basically get as much uh, as many cables going as you as you want, as long as you've got your you know a decent router at the heart of it. So they advertise. Quick look at the box. Um, they're just saying the basic features that it can do and what do they say so the headline features okay so the the rule what they think is a usp unique selling point on this is that it it does vpn um i'm, I'm not don't not heavy user of that it's not a big deal to me but um if that's why you, you're buying it just to point out um it supports two protocols um uh, ipsec which is internet protocol security and uh pptp which is point-to-point -point tunneling protocol. Um, PT, PPTP, nobody uses anymore. It's pretty obsolete because it's uh, not very secure. So <laughs> they're still advertising it and it, it shows the age, I guess, of the router. Not least, not least because on the back I, I did notice it says 
uh, support for Windows 8. So obviously um, they've not changed it since Windows 10 has been out. And of course, it's not really reliant on your on your on your um, operating system anyway, is it? It's a router. Uh, what else do they say? Uh, efficient bandwidth management, blah blah blah. These are all what any router is going to do. You just hope it's going to do it a little bit better. You know, it's got, but it's got all the basics. So you've got your stateful packet inspection and firewall. Um, so it's basically making sure that uh, all the connections have been in, in, initiated from uh, your network first. So it's blocking anything coming in and. Um, on that, it does have, um, which doesn't say here, I know it does do ALG, application level gateway, which is basically a fancy way of saying you can um, direct stuff into your network. So if you're running servers or anything that's listening for a connection, like um, FTP and multimedia stuff, anything that's listening for a connection, it's basically a server. Um, so you can tell it the route to actually go, the ports, and where to end up with, on where to end up on, the network so that's good it makes it easier to, to configure um, just makes it a little bit more re reliable because those are the sort of things it's sometimes you do get problems with does um, IP Mac and domain name filtering which is you know a useful thing to have although you can spoof these things um, it says web-based management um, so the other things I do know it does uh, it does Mac cloning which is really handy so you can change the actual MAC address of the router, um, which is quite good because you, so you can appear to be a completely new separate device on the network if you want to. It's also good if you your ISP if your ISP binds your IP, you know, assuming you, you're supposed to be on a dynamic and not a static. If you're on a dynamic IP which you're expecting to change, often it doesn't because the ISP binds it to your MAC address, and if you there are ways of changing it, but it makes it a little bit easier because they, they bind it to your MAC address. That's how they know it's your router. Change the MAC address, you know, you reconnect. They think it's a completely new connection, so you'll most likely get a new um, IP quite useful. It does have 4KV lightning protection, which is quite handy, but I would assume most people have got that via their electric sockets anyway and if you haven't you should have you shouldn't be relying on being internal in, in your uh, actual device um, something else that I noticed on here lifetime warranty um, which is quite nice um, I think that's all the mo most of the things covered I said for me I just wanted something that's going to be reliable resilient you know um, it's going to give me a stable connection and it's not going to be cluttered with um, options that I'm never going to use that it's going to just do what it what it's supposed to do well and they've, they've not you know put the money into it you're not paying for stuff that you're never going to use most importantly there's no wireless stuff in here it's all it's a wide dedicated wide router which normally means it's going to be far more reliable than uh, a combined wide and wireless router um, that's what i'm hoping for and that's been my experience in the past and i'm really loving my uh, unify um wi-fi dish so hopefully there'll be a really nice pair so right so now i'm going to do the unboxing if you are at all interested but uh, <laughs> i know i looked at some unboxings before i got it so somebody might be so i'm going to unbox it now so here we go with the scissors so make a nice neat job of it Ready to be opened. Try and keep it nice and neat for when I sell it one day on eBay. As everything ends up being on eBay at some point. So we have one general public license notice. No, thank you. Uh, we have. So that's your quick setup guide. Hopefully it should be as simple as plugging it in, but uh, you never know. So anyway, so you got your quick uh, guide there. You got your your, your CD-ROM for your uh, software if you use it that way. They normally stick a load of garbage on, but I'll see how we go. That is the um, 
the root out and it's I like it. It's a really nice size. It's not one of these yeah, clunky, over round, you know, designed to go that way because it looks really modern, but it's just functional. You know, and that'll sit anywhere, slide in somewhere, stick it in your rack mount, wherever. Um, I'm not sure if it was supposed to be rack mount, well, I didn't actually see, but looking at it, I'm, I would assume it is, yeah. Um, so I won't actually take this off. Of, all right, I will. All right, yeah. It twisted me on there, mate. So, we've got the. The internal, the MAC address that it comes with, of course, you can actually change change that to serial number, blah blah blah, and all that. Um, and your standard <laughs> username and password is admin admin. Nobody will ever hack that. So, of course, I'm joking, and you need to change that straight away because um, it is uh, can be managed remotely. So it, it is quite important uh, to get <laughs> the security set up on that properly. And uh, yeah. A load of what's this? This is um, CP Link hereby declares that this device is in compliance with the essential requirements and other relevant provisions of directives. Blah blah blah. Well, I'm mightily relieved about it. So, we've got me plug, oops, <laughs> got me uh, plug to go in there, and that is a UK plug. You never quite know these days what you're going to get. Um, supplied cable. Now, what is is this? Do we know what this actually is? Because they do tend to put cheap ones in, don't they? Anyway, I'm going to use my own cables anyway. Well, we've got some uh, some feet, little rubber feet. to put it on. That's quite nice. So you can choose to um, put little rubber bits in there, which is quite handy. And that is the sum total of it. So, you know, it is a simple device, and that was the whole point. I think it looks quite nice. I know black is a bit boring, and um, but, you know, you've got your lights there. If you're in, uh, uh, having a look, making sure everything's going, it tells you which ones uh, are plugged in. It'll come on with lights. Of course, it's gigabyte, but of course, it's backwards compatible. So, uh, it'll come on green if it's uh, full gigabyte, and um, if it's uh, backwards compatible with 10 and 100, it'll come on with orange uh, to tell you what speed is it's connecting at. You have the separate connection light for your WAN, um, for your power light, and your sys light. So that's basically everything. That's the back of it. Where you plug in, you can do your reset there, and your uh, your ports. So you know, it's not nothing really exciting about. It. Just it's nice, it's neat, it's functional. You know, it's a proper shape. It's not one of these fancy dandy things that end up being awkward to place in the correct in any reasonable position. Um, okay, so that is my unboxing. Thank you.